Ten-year-old Joma was waiting for his mother to pick him up from school when the missile hit. My head hurts so much, he tells me. And I don't know what happened to my friends. His UN school happens to be next to a police station and the strike hit at precisely the time children were going home. Mohammed is a police officer. On Saturday morning, a missile hit the station he was working at. I told him Israel says they're targeting Hamas's security apparatus. The police force is not political. It's an institution for the people. Androya is a doctor. She was working at her clinic when an airstrike hit the police station next door. Rauya has three children. And now, as a direct result of Israel's so-called targeted strikes, doctors say it's unlikely she'll ever see them again. The invasion started two days ago, and it was so hard that we were rushed by cases which are very complicated, serious cases, and dead bodies re reached the hospitals at once, hundreds of them, dozens, and everybody was just thrown in the ground like that, and we were just running between them like a chicken without head, just you know, to save lives as much as we can. All over the hospital, we saw civilian casualties of what Israel calls its war on Hamas and spoke to those whose lives will never be the same again because of Israel's decision to dismantle Hamas by destroying Gaza. The hospital is chaotic. Hundreds of people are just standing around waiting. There aren't enough beds to treat the injured. There isn't enough spaces in the wards for the family members who are waiting. Meanwhile, doctors are telling us that they're running out of every supply from solutions to gauzes. And right now, one of their main problems is that they're running very low on almost every single type of blood. Days of continuous Israeli bombardment have also taken their toll on the Strip's already poor infrastructure. From the rubble that was once a mosque that happened to be by a police station, to the school hit as Israel targeted another building nearby. And all this as Gaza's 1.5 million people lie trapped inside this war zone, afraid they'll be the next ones in the wrong place at the wrong time. While we were sleeping, I heard a loud thud at the mosque next door. We were so afraid, and look what happened to my son. At least we are alive. Seven of us were sleeping in a room when we heard the explosion. The walls collapsed around us. It took two hours to get help, but my sisters did not make it. It was too late. All around Gaza are makeshift funerals, but few attend. People here are too scared to venture out, even though they know staying indoors is no safer. The tents another example of how Gaza is becoming a graveyard. And as Israel promises to continue its war as long as it feels necessary, what everyone here fears is how many more lives that will take. Shireen Tadros, Al Jazeera, Gaza.